Nathaniel Banks. Daniels. Um, we'll start off with this question. Um, what encouraged you to play music? Um, what encouraged me to play music? Probably just my love of it from the time I was very small. Whenever music came on, I, I enjoyed it and wanted to, to play it. So um, when the, uh, in the elementary school, when they started the, uh, in the fifth grade, talking to students about the music program, that, that was something that I wanted to do. Plus that uh, my parents and grandparents were involved in music too. What did you like best um, in the music program, about the music program? Just playing. Um, just getting, that, getting a chance to play songs. Um, also, at that point, believe it or not, when we were in elementary school, the music, the band program actually rehearsed at the high school. So we had to leave elementary school, walk by ourselves with no chaperones to the high school, and that was always cool too. Mm -hmm. okay. um, what does music mean to you? I think music means, uh, or is a means of communicating with other people uh, the, the positive feelings that, that one has, and you're able to use music as a, as a way of doing that. Um, what responsibilities do you have as a musician? That's a good question. There are a lot of possibilities, which is why it's good for musicians to be as, as uh, open-minded as possible as to what kind of music that they like and, and want to play. Uh, so for instance, if, if you want to play classical music, learning all of your scales, learning how to have good tone control, all those kinds of things are going to serve you well as a classical musician. Musicians can be uh, studio musicians, uh, which means that when people have music that they want to record, or, or yes, want to record, um, they hire musicians who have uh, proficiency on their instruments and you're able to, to have that experience. You can play in uh, rock bands, you can play in jazz bands, uh, you can play in country bands. Um, so it's, it's, it's a, a wide variety of, of what we call musical genres that, um, that are available to, to any musician. So, uh, being able to play in each one of those arenas is probably a really good thing. So you may have your own preference as far as music that you like to play or you like to listen to, but a real musician is going to be able to play any kind of music that's set before him or her. Um, what does it take to be a, a great musician? A lot of practice, a lot of listening, and a lot of opportunity to just play. Um, which means that you you know you have to get involved where music is being uh, dealt with. So going with the band program in your schools, for instance, is, is a good way. Um, I happened to get my degree in music from, from college, so I was able to uh, play in the college bands. And it really, as a jazz musician, anytime I get a chance to go out and play with other musicians, that's important too because music is not always uh, uh, just for individuals. Music is something that has a lot of, inter that people have a lot of interaction with one another, and that's what makes music uh, uh, resonate with, with other people. Okay. Um, what do you like best about the jazz music that you play? Um, jazz music, because it, I, believe that jazz music is the truly American music. It's, it's the music that was indigenous to this country. Uh, I like it because it's so uh, diverse and just like the country itself, it, a lot of uh, the various cultures that fi found their way to this country, though their, those cultures found their way into jazz music as well. So that you have African rhythms, you have European harmonies, uh, you have uh, classical, again, uh, and, and romantic music that, that uh, jazz musicians listen to and then that came out of their music. So I think the thing that I like most about it is it, it is so diverse in, in the kinds of styles of jazz music that can be 
play. You can play anything from uh, the Dixie, well, used to, some people call it Dixie Land, some people call it New Orleans style jazz, but there's a whole group of musicians in the New Orleans area to play that type of music. Um, there's, there's jazz music in New York City, jazz music in California, and each one of those areas has their own unique uh, approach to, to the music. Um, what experiences have you had? Have you had um, as a trumpet player? Um, probably the, the the best experience that I've had was the preparation that I received under the uh, guidance of a man named John Garvey. He was the the uh, leader of the University of Illinois Jazz Ensemble, and that's really when I got interested in jazz music. Before that, I was I was a rock and roll musician, you know, or rhythm and blues musician. But uh, when I came to college, he actually taught our band how to think musically, and, and I think that was probably my best experience. The, the most memorable experience was when I got a chance to be a substitute in New York City for um, my mentor, Cecil Bridgewater. He played in the uh, Thad Jones Mel Lewis. Orchestra, which was the, one of the premier orchestras, jazz orchestras in uh, New York at that time. So that was a great experience. Okay. Um, can you tell me about the history of jazz and blues? Well, it's uh, to, to give you the two minute elevator speech about jazz and blues, blues actually uh, came from West Africa. Uh, a lot of the the, uh, the songs that people sang there, the, they used to sing while they worked, for instance. Actually, in Africa, singing and dancing are a complete part of the culture. So just about every aspect of the culture, uh, there's some sort of song that goes with it, so, uh, singing or dancing. And so when they worked, they, they would do what we now call field howlers. Um, and those uh, field howlers then got translated when when our ancestors were brought here as, as enslaved people. Um, and those field howlers, especially in Mississippi, it turned into what we call blues. Because basically blues is based off of a, a, a five note scale. It's called a pentatonic scale um, that um, is very prevalent in um, countries in West Africa. And so those field howlers uh, in, in America were called blue notes. Uh, some of those notes in the scale were, were uh, flatted notes, basically. Were, that's a, I won't even get into that. But basically, um, the, the way that people sing, and we hear it in church a lot, too, mm -hmm. um, that's w what blues is. And so jazz is basically an outgrowth. It's, it's in essence, musicians imitating people singing. That's how jazz started. And, and jazz always was a part of the dance culture of the, of the community too. So jazz was actually dance music when it first started. And then as the musicians grew uh, musically, they started what we call stretching out. Or they, they started doing things that weren't not, were not necessarily meant for the dancers. They just liked what they were doing. And so then jazz began to evolve. But it really started there, so uh, the blues started. Gospel was a gospel is an outgrowth of the blues. Jazz is an outgrowth of the blues. But the blues itself is just the uh, the folk music that African Americans uh, brought to this country. Okay. Um, do you play any other instruments other than trumpet? Uh, yes, I do. The I was a music education major, which means mm -hmm. that we had to be trained in all of the music. So that just like your band teacher. When something goes wrong with the, with the clarinets section, then the band teacher has to tell them, here's how you do that. And so, yeah, I was trained on how to play all the, all the reeds, uh, how to make reeds, um, all the brass instruments. We got trained in piano. But the instruments that I am most proficient at would be trumpet uh, and guitar and drums. Okay. Um, um, what do you like most about the uh, kids that you teach? I think the, mo the thing I like most is seeing them progress as, as young musicians. When they come to me, sometimes they can barely get a sound out of the instrument. And then 
as, as they get older, they get better, and, and that to me is very satisfying to see that growth in, in each one of the students. Um, um, how does um, music affect other people? Uh, it affects other people in a lot of ways, but the one thing about music is it is actually a language, and it's a language that doesn't use words necessarily, so music goes right into a person's heart or, or right into their spirit, mm -hmm. and so depending on where that person is, depending on what kind of music is being played or, or sung, um, that's that sort of determines how people are receiving it. Uh, so a lot of it has to do with where I am at that particular point in time as, as a person who's listening to it. Have you played in any uh, music groups? Yeah, I used to play in, like I was mentioning, uh, some rhythm and blues groups. I played in jazz groups. Uh, I played in the school band mm -hmm. and um, the marching band, yeah. So all those experiences. Um, have you ever experienced to watch your audience have any emotional feelings about the music? That you all play? the time, yeah. Um, and that's probably the the nice thing about music is that you get immediate feedback on what you're doing. The audience either either loves it or they say you you need to do a little bit better the next time. Which is where our our group that we started Mo Better Music that's where that that's where that concept comes from. Uh, it's based on when, when a child is practicing and they sound lousy, as most children do, like I was. <laughs> um, and, and the grandma says, you got to do more better than that, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the concept. Stick, stick with it, do your practicing, and then pretty soon all of that work's going to pay off. Um, what advice do you have for a kid that is thinking about playing an instrument? I think the main thing is... Well, actually, two, I have two pieces of advice. First of all, make sure you do that. <laughs> okay, make sure you do play an instrument. And then the second thing, which is almost as important, is stick with the instrument. Even if you, you start hearing other instruments that sound a little bit better to you, stick with the one, okay, and, and get really good at that. Then you can start adding your experiences with other instruments. But so many young people, because they have so many options, they'll say, okay, well, I want to play trumpet this week. And then they play a little while. Oh, guitar sounds better, so I'll switch to guitar. Oh, I like the piano. And pretty soon, they're all over the place, and they're not gaining any skills, and they're not getting any better. So my advice to young musicians is just, once you've got an instrument, I didn't want to play trumpet. I actually wanted to play violin. But... Um, my dad didn't like that idea, so they bought me a trumpet. Um, but the fact that I stuck with the trumpet, which is not something that I really wanted to do, to be honest with you, and uh, as I look back on it, was a really good decision. So yeah, that's that's my advice to young musicians. Okay. Um, are you originally from Illinois? I'm originally from Champaign. Okay. Yeah, so I grew up in the Champaign schools, the whole nine yards. Is this the only place you have lived? Um, permanently, yes. When I, I, I did travel on the road for, for a year, and there on the road you just live out of a suitcase. But yeah, Champagne is basically my home. Um, do you have any kids? If so, uh, do they play instruments? I have three sons, and um, yes, but two of them are actually really good drummers. Um, one of them plays bass, not as much as I'd like to see him play. Um, um, I guess that wraps up my um, interview. All right. Um, can, can, I, can, I, can I give you one question, which I thought would be interesting? You're asking about the, his More Better music program and how it, he thinks it affects the community. Would that be good? Mm -hmm. um, how does your Mo uh, Better music affect your community? I think Mo Better Music has had a very positive effect on the community. When, when our students go out and perform, We've performed at Douglas Park, we've performed at the libraries, and I watch the faces of the parents as well as the people in the audience. They really like to see young people uh, succeeding and, and doing positive things, so it's, we've had a really good response from the community. The, the community's been very, very supportive of us. Okay. Um, thank you. You're welcome. And, um, Thank you for your time, and um, can I get a sample of your trumpet? Uh, 
Okay. I haven't played for a while. Okay, so I'll play a little bit. And as a trumpet player, you know if you don't warm up, the first the first sounds kind of are a challenge. <laughs> Turn off the camera. <laughs> 